If you want to listen, you just tune in. If you want to follow along, turn to the Gospel of Matthew. That's the first book. That's the first gospel in the New Testament. We'll be looking at the 15th chapter. I think I'm safe in singing. I've never preached from this text before. I did a little bit of digging on exactly what this text is saying. But here we find the faith of a woman, a Canaanite woman, and how God was able to meet her needs. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him, Lord, help me. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Yes, Lord, she said, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Interestingly enough, in Greek, crumb was singular, not plural. Then Jesus answered, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. May God add his blessings to the reading, the proclamation, the understanding of his holy and blessed word. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but let me ask a question. Is there anyone in here today, anyone within the sound of my voice that have any needs in their life? Whether it be a need or many need. See, I'd be willing to venture that perhaps all of us. I would say that the possibility would be very, 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 very slim. But we would gather together today and say, I don't really have any needs. I don't really have any concerns. I think we all do. Let me take it a step further. I believe that every one of us has at least one, maybe many more, major needs in our lives right now. You may be at a point right now where you've got this major need and you just, you don't see any way possible for that need or those needs to be met. See, there's some that's going through devastating family situations. There's others that are dealing with financial difficulties. Maybe there's the problem with a child or children. There's some that may be concerned with their own soul, knowing that they're lost. You may be dealing with some disease right now and you don't know what lies ahead. There's some of you that have parents that realize that you're not going to have them forever. And I was with a family last night. They came to grips with that reality. In fact, we could go through a whole long list all day long and still not exhaust the list of problems that could be in our own lives. Now, in the midst of all of our problems, in the midst of all of these issues, you need to know that there's someone out there that can help you. You need to know that there's someone out there that can turn that situation around and bring resolution to whatever that problem is. You need to know that God can be at work in your life. I think you need to know that God is at work. See, I know a little bit about what I'm talking about today. I've been there. I've been in situations I don't see how in the world this is going to be dealt with. God just got to do a miracle here. Got to work it out. I'm convinced that through faith, 
trusting in him, the right things will come together. And it may be that you don't need the Lord to lift every burden off of your shoulders. You just need him to make it a little easier. It may very well be that you don't need the Lord to move an entire mountain. You just need that mountain not to be so high. It may be that you need just a crumb. Maybe you don't need the whole loaf of bread. You just need to know that the Lord is there to give you something. And all that you're asking for is a little something from the Lord. So that's the situation that we're looking at today in this passage. Jesus has been approached by a woman that finds herself in a desperate situation. She needs something in her life. We read that a moment ago. And she comes to the Lord, and as she comes to the Lord, she's not asking for the whole loaf. She's not asking for everything that he could provide. All she's asking for is a crumb or a few crumbs. She knows that a crumb or crumbs from the Lord is better than nothing. When the Lord is the one that's offering those crumbs. And as we go through this, we will see. And we'll be reminded through this woman's story that in whatever situation you're in, there is hope. That's the biggest part of my job. Encouraging people, whatever situation you're in. There's hope. There's hope. And there's people just, just like that dog wagging his tail. Give me something. Lord, just give me a crumb. Give me something. We see there in verse 22, the woman's petition here. Now, the reason she came, she came to, to the Lord. She, she came out of care for her own daughter. Now, apparently, she was demon-possessed and was probably acting out in violence and anger. She needed help. She was in a desperate situation. And that mother was in a desperate situation. Here this woman was following Jesus and his disciples. She was frantic. She was brokenhearted. And she was determined to get that child the help that she needed. Now, interestingly enough, Mark, in his gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, in the seventh chapter... He records this story also. And he says that the woman had heard of him. This woman had heard of this man called Jesus, this Messiah, the great healer, the great miracle worker. Maybe she had heard that Jesus healed all manners, excuse me, all manner of diseases. Maybe she had heard that Jesus was able to open the eyes of the blind and unstop the ears to the deaf and to heal people in so many maladies in their life. This woman came to Christ because faith and hope was sparked in her life. Here she is going through a desperate situation. There's some guy out here who claims to be the Messiah. And she goes looking for him. Searching for him, begging, as we see in this, for mercy. She needed something that society could not provide. She needed a solution that she could not come up with on her own. She was desperate, and she saw Jesus Christ as being the only hope for her situation. But then we see this woman was very persistent. And by the way, you have an outline for the back of the bulletin. You do. It's not on there, but you have an outline. I don't know what the problem is. My computer is not connecting with the printer. 
So it wouldn't print, but if you want to go back there and look at it, it's on the screen right now, okay? I promise you. All right? All right. But you notice this woman's persistence. This woman came to Jesus. But if you read this, you understand that she really did not get the response that she was wanting immediately. She didn't get the response that I don't believe that she was hoping for. But we see that she stays persistent until she get what she wants. There are some obstacles of faith in order for her needs to be met. Her daughter had to be healed. And this woman had to overcome certain obstacles in her life. In verse 21 there, I didn't know this. I'd sort of forgotten if I ever did know it. She came from the region of Tyre and Sidon. And then verse 22 uh, adds another complication. She was a Canaanite. Now, this tells us two things about this woman. First of all, she was a descendant from a cursed people. You'll remember over in the seventh chapter of Deuteronomy, when Joshua led the people of Israel into Canaan, they were commanded to destroy the Canaanites. So she was a member of a doomed race. And then secondly, she was from a region known for vile religious practices. So from the very start, she's got two strikes against her as she comes up before Jesus and his disciples. She also had to overcome religion. So she called out to the Lord and said, Have mercy on me, son of God, or son of David, whatever translation you may be looking at. Here was a Gentile mother crying out to a Jewish Messiah. Now when the disciples see her, and when the disciples hear her, they're, they're telling the Messiah, send her away. Tell her to get lost. We don't have anything to offer her. Tell her to get scat. They don't have anything to do with her. Pretty obvious. When you look at this scripture and dig into it, that's why. Because of where she was from and the strike she had against her. So she was overcoming rejection. Now those words there, I think it's verses 23, 24, 25, 26. There's some pretty harsh words there. You know, so many people came to Jesus and he instantly healed them. Now, there's some dialogue going on right here, some pretty harsh words. I, I, I would imagine that those words shook the very core of her being with this Messiah who was healing everybody through their faith and was giving her a little bit of a problem. Now, the problem is here's a woman that is brokenhearted because of the condition of her daughter. And it appears that the Lord is ignoring her. It is as if he is, is turning an indifferent ear to her cries. Then he tells her that his whole purpose in coming to the world is to reach the lost sheep of Israel. And then she persists. Jesus tells her that she is like a dog and does not deserve the children's bread. Do you really understand what's, what's going on right here? The disciples rejected her. And now it looks as if Jesus too is rejecting her. And then she had to come to terms with reality. The way things are. Now the realities going on in her life are pretty harsh. They're pretty devastating. She's got a daughter that is possessed by the devil. She, the mother, is a member of a doomed race. And then these religious men don't even want to have anything to do with her. Don't care about her or the situation that she finds herself in. 
But then as the story unfolds, you see the opportunities of faith unfolding. Now, Jesus speaks. And as he speaks, he's not slamming the door of hope in her face. It may appear at one point there, but, but he's really not. These obstacles that he's throwing out at her are not to defeat her. They're not to destroy her. I believe the Lord is placing those obstacles there for her to mature in her faith. And we see just in a very few verses that that's, that's, that's happening. What's the progression here? Verse 22, she calls on Jesus. Based on his role as the Jewish Messiah, she calls on his holy name. And then on verses 24 and 25, she moves from seeing Jesus as that Messiah to being the only hope that she has for her daughter's sake. Then she sees him as being worthy of worship. She bows down in verse 24, bows down at his feet. She humbles herself and acknowledges him for being who he is. Now in verses 26 and 27, Jesus refers to her as a dog. I'm going to explain that, okay? The Jews looked at all non-Jewish people as dogs. And that was a terminology that was used. It was a metaphor that described people that were unclean, people that were filthy, people that were dirty. And they saw this Canaanite woman as being unclean. And then Jesus responds to her faith. I think he is amazed at the faith that is exemplified right here through this woman. See, the Lord had tested her faith with those harsh words. But her faith was able to rise to the challenge. And he rewarded her faith. He rewarded her faith by giving her exactly what she asked for. He healed her daughter. Her faith was so strong. She didn't even ask for proof. She took Jesus at his word. She turned away and went home to her family. She didn't have to bring the child there to him. He said, your child, your daughter is healed today. She took him at his word. So she went home. And we have no reason to believe that child wasn't ill. It was her faith, her persistence in leaning on the Lord that she got what she asked for. And it wasn't for selfish reasons. It was to glorify God. Now take heart today, my friends. I know, I know my sheep. And there's people here today that need to know that whatever situation you're in, there's hope. There's hope. Today, today just might be the day that your master, your savior, responds to your cry. Today might be the day that the Lord moves that mountain that you've been praying for for a long time. Today may be the day that you call upon him to be saved. Today might be the day that God speaks to your soul. Just like what Steve had an experience here just a couple of weeks ago. God was speaking in his heart. And he responded, there's others that need to respond to that same call, that same tug of the Holy Spirit in your own life. Today may be the very day that you hear the voice of God saying, it's okay. It's all right. I'm in control. Trust me. I am your source of hope. 
Today might be the day that you see your life and your situations filled with pain and regret changed to peace and joy. But what you need to do is just what this woman did. You've got to come to him in faith, knowing that he will hear you, knowing that he will help you, knowing that he can fix any problem that we may have. It may not be fixed the way we want it. But God will hear, God will respond, and God will fix it. Bring it to him. Learn the joy of placing it into his hands. Or better yet, placing it at his feet and trusting him. Lord, I give it to you. See, when I place something at the Lord's feet, it's like I place it at the foot of the cross. Okay, Lord, it's, it's your problem now. I'm going to walk away. You deal with it. i got to trust that you're going to work it out. I don't know how, but my hope is in you. And some of you are probably saying, if I could read your mind, preacher, you have no idea what I'm dealing with in my life. You have no idea what I'm dealing with in my family. You have no idea what's going on in my world. No. No, I'm not going to pretend to know because I probably, if I know much, I don't know nearly enough. But I do know that a little crumb from the Lord's table is really all you need. I can't give you the crumb that you need. Your friends and your family can't give you the crumbs that you need. But a crumb from the Lord's table will meet you in your needs. Now, you may be, you may be at a point where you need more than crumbs. You may need the whole loaf. But the Lord knows your needs. And whatever those needs are, through faith, he will meet those needs. See, I don't know what your need is. I don't know exactly where you are in your walk and in your pilgrimage in life. I don't know where you are in your relationship with the Lord. I don't need to know. But I do know that he can meet you where you are and meet your needs, whatever they might be. You might need to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ today. You may need the Lord to move a humongous mountain that's been placed in your life. You may need to have your faith and your fellowship with the Lord restored. You might. You might need to see God work in the life of a family member that you've been praying for for a long time. Maybe for salvation. Maybe for other situations. Even if you have sought him in the past and he didn't work like you thought he would, today could be the day that he answers your prayer. Have mercy on me, O oh Lord. Let's pray. My blessing for each of you is this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. For that, ain't no pill for what? Well, we'll check on that and see here. In a few minutes, we're going to be looking at the fifth chapter of Ephesians. I got to tell you, my text today is very short. My text today is 